Word on the street. Fish smash show. What's the word on the street? Like who got the beast that be killing the game? Who's up on the scale? Who playing who? What's the score on the sheet? Fiso the prince got him taking the seat. Got the legends giving us the 411. Fiso Mugs from the OV1. No hate is sports and entertainment when we got it all and we're the only ones. And after all that action, action. I'm a hobby dripping out fashion. Drippy drippy on some rich and nissy, but it's stylish and soak up with passion. If it's giving us less, then we never settle. Make sure you pull up and bring all your medals. Sit back and relax, let's go. It's Miss Mask bringing you the Fist Mask show. It's the fist man 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 show. Hello and welcome to the fist man show, everybody. Really looking forward to getting to getting stuck into today's show. It's going to be an exciting one. Uh, plenty to discuss. The focus will be, of course, on the DSTV Premiership. And how Kaiser Chiefs have gone this season. That's going to be uh, an interesting uh, subject in particular because I've got Menzi Ngobo who will be joining me, former Nighty Lions uh, uh, official, of course, and a former agent. So he's someone who does have his ear on the ground in terms of South African football and he's very close to uh, the relevant party. So I'm hoping that we are able to get something really, really nice and juicy from him with regards to how things are at Kaiser Chiefs. Is there pressure on Gavin Hunt? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting chat indeed. But first of, all, first of all, let's get stuck in all that hot stuff that is happening all around the world. We start out in India because what a series it's been out there. And we saw India winning the second test match quite comprehensively. They, of course, did lose the first test match. Um, and it was a really, really a tough for them to take. And they bounced back quite nicely. But there was a lot of controversy because plenty of uh, former players were complaining about the surface. The likes of former England captain Michael Vaughan, he touched on it being an absolutely rubbish surface. And uh, we saw Shane Warne coming to the defence and saying, look, it's the same for everybody. And, and then, of course, Graham Swan, uh, the former England spinner, he spoke about, uh, I guess, the change of attitude that needs to be there when going to those subcontinent conditions. I've always felt that it's beautiful to watch. Um, you know, I know people speak about a fair contest between bat and ball, but at the end of the day, it's both teams have to play on those surfaces. And I always look at it as a beautiful challenge um, for a team to go there and knowing that it's going to turn, knowing that it's going to be difficult, and it gives players an opportunity to, to I guess, test their game a bit. And I love to see it, but again, um, there are plenty of different opinions with regard to that in particular. So, uh, yeah, interesting. I don't know what you guys think. Feel free to let us know. You can tweet me uh, at the first man's show uh, on Twitter and let me know what you think. Um, you can drop a comment below in terms of, obviously, um, this particular platform that we're on. And it'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts with regards to that in particular. And then we move on to the Premier League. Liverpool, of course, it hasn't quite been the perfect season for the Reds. They uh, were a side plenty were expecting uh, uh, good from, you know, especially having signed the likes of Thiago Alcantara. But then, you know, the defensive disaster, unfortunately. Um, Joel Matip out for the season. Virgil van Dijk suffering a really bad injury early in the campaign. And, of course, uh, the, the talented Joe Gomez also missing in action. They've had to bring in reinforcements. And it's been a tough time for Liverpool. And this is what Jurgen Klopp had to say when people started to ask questions whether or not he was under pressure and perhaps looking to resign. Honestly, the situation is a challenge. I see it more as an, as an no, I don't want to have the situation, but now we are in, and now I see it as a challenge, an interesting challenge. So you do, I cannot ask a lot of people, nobody wrote a book about, again, how did you come in a situation like that and how do you sort it? But we will sort it. We'll be sorted. And please, while we are doing it, everybody could be tricky. But sorting it by playing football, sorting it by sticking even more together, sorting it by, by fighting with all you have, sorting it by learning more than you can learn in each season we played before. For all you Manchester United fans, I'm sure you will be ecstatic to hear that Mason Greenwood, he signed a new contract until 2025. Of course, one of the most exciting young players in English football and world football, if you consider that he's so young and he, he's already broken so many records in terms of uh, youth football. And of course, that uh, did wonders in his uh, first season in terms of playing consistently for the Manchester United first team. So, yeah, Mason Greenwood, congratulations on the new deal. I know United fans will be celebrating worldwide. Now, we're going to move our attention to social media abuse. That's, gonna, that's been a really interesting topic um, because when you've looked around the world of sports, it's not an easy place to be, uh, to be a professional athlete. 
Uh, at times, people are expected to be, I guess, these superhumans, um, to not make mistakes. And it's just, it's an unfair reality that we have as, as sometimes as broadcasters, um, as fans, we expect people to be on it all the time um, because they, I guess, get paid a certain amount of money. They play sport every day. Um, it should be their daily bread. But in fact, there's so much that goes on in people's lives. And the truth is, a human being will never be perfect. And, you know, we've seen Mike Dean, the Premier League referee, getting plenty of abuse after, I guess, um, decisions that came under the microscope. I don't want to come hard at Mike Dean because, like I said, he is a human being and he would have made those calls, you know, fairly and, and, and he would have made them thinking that they're the right calls. So, uh, yeah, quite a tough one. And another person who suffered a bit of abuse is Bernd Leno, um, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Uh, obviously, made a really poor mistake and got, red, got a red card. Didn't sit well um, with Arsenal fans and football fans around the world. There's also been plenty, plenty of racial abuse on online. It's a major problem. Um, and then Bernd Leno touched on his particular experience. And I thought it was quite an interesting one with regards to his thoughts. So many stupid people on social media. And that's the reason why I don't read it. Even when everything is good, I don't read it. Because like I said, I don't need that. It doesn't make me better. It's just... Um, like wasting wasting time because there are so many fake people they hide hide behind uh, their phones or their computers um, just to make you feel bad and um, yeah and you could see that many times with racism or something like this they um, with their families and and everything and yes I don't like that so um, I don't read that too much because. At the end, it, at the end, it just affects uh, your life, and what's the point? Right then, that is all the hot stuff pretty much wrapped up, and we're going to head over now to our special guest on the show, who's going to just take us through his thoughts with how things have gone so far in the DSCV Premiership. We've seen the likes of Cape Town City playing some good football. We've seen the emergence of Amazulu as a top eight potential team, and of course, Golden Arrows have been punching above their weight and have been really good so far. And Manjangliga is doing an outstanding job there. So let's go catch up with former Kaiser Chiefs Mamelu Sundowns and Bafana Bafana defender Fabian McCarthy just to get his thoughts with regards to the DSTV Premiership. Yeah, good day, this is uh, Fabian Makati, Supersport Analyst, uh, ex-Kaiser uh, Chiefs Sundowns Bafana Defender. Uh, looking at the DSTV Premiership uh, halfway through, 16 games played, by the look of times it's going to be difficult and hard for teams to catch Sundowns, but I think Sundowns has what it takes to obviously stay there and maintain the position, uh, looking into how they far. Uh, on the continent in the CAF Games or how far they're going to go into the competition uh, which is the Netbank Cup but I know Sundowns' focus is on the league. Uh, I think they can manage to keep uh, the momentum going and stay on top until end of the season but uh, I must say I think the Pizza Factor will definitely be a bit of a challenge for them in terms of the coaches that are there, very good coaches, um, good personality, good character but are they going to get it right the way Coach Pisto go about his business the past seasons when they win the DSTV Premiership. We'd like to see how Sundowns is going to seal it. As for Morocco's uh, Swallows FC, they are doing extremely well above themselves. For them to think about winning the league, I think they must take that out of out of their mind, out of uh, their signs. They must just focus and take it one day at, uh, a game at a time. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. I touched on the fact that Kaiser Chiefs is such a major focus right now in South African football because we all know, really, and if we're honest, a strong Kaiser Chiefs is, is good for South African football. So it's understandable why there are concerns, not only from the general public, but uh, also from the fans themselves. And probably one of the, the, the things that are probably saving uh, Gavin Hunter, the, man, the fans, the fans aren't allowed in the stadiums. I don't know if Menzi Nolwa will agree with me, our resident football expert, Menzi. You know, would you say that Kaiser Chiefs, there'll be even more pressure if there was fans at the stadium right now? To tell you the honest truth, Piso, um, Chiefs' performances this season have been nothing short of disappointing. And uh, I'm actually quite glad that the fans are not allowed to be at the stadiums because as you know, how we as South African football lovers, our supporting culture does not lend itself to what do you call 
Me and the patients. You guys are a problem. Exactly. You are a problem. You know. <laughs> so, so it's it's not a good advert for South African football. And I know people will talk about we are not able to sign players, and it's it's uh, Kevin Hunt um, inherited a team with psychologically um, troubled players who lost the league on the last day. But the, the bottom line is that Chiefs are struggling. And um, maybe we can get an opportunity to dissect why they are struggling. I mean, you, almost what you're alluding to there is, 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 a, is that Gavin Hunt almost, I guess, has a free pass with regards to how the team is going because he hasn't been able to put his mark down in terms of the group, in terms of recruitment and, and getting the players he wants. But is that really an excuse um, or will Kevin Hunt be looking at himself and thinking he is a top coach, he's won league titles, he's done it wherever he's gone. Will he be hard on himself right now and thinking, I should be getting more out of this group? I can think of quite a number of things that are shielding Kevin Hunt from direct sunlight at the moment. One, he was a direct appointment by the club chairman, uh, Mr. Keza Mundaung, he's a personal favorite of him. So that buys him a lot of time. Number two, he comes with a lot of pedigree with about nine major titles, eight major titles, if I'm not mistaken, in top flight South African football, excluding his exploits in the NFD when he was still coaching seven stars. The other thing, fans are not at the stadium, as we alluded earlier. More importantly, probably, the fact that he hasn't been able to sign his own players. Um, and the one other big factor that's riding on his favor is that he comes with a big pedigree. But that big pedigree is untested. Why am I saying it's untested? It's untested because he's never really coached a top flight South African football club. He's always been sort of like a coach who can take a bunch of minnows or a bunch of of, of players that have been thrown away into the doldrums of South African football and put them together, inspired them and built a team out of nothing. He's never been able to coach a team that comes with pedigree and coach them to championships. Um, and I think that might be, this might be his biggest test yet in South African football, most definitely. I think uh, looking at it from that perspective, uh, we've already, already alluded to the titles that this man has won uh, at Supersport United, Bidvis Vits. Uh, obviously, the or the defunct Bitvis Bits. And you think, okay, this guy knows how to find a way. Um, he knows how to find a way to be successful. Um, and, and, and like you're saying, he's going to be tested this time around. And, and you look at a guy like Kevin Hans, you think high standards, you think he demands a lot from his players. Will he be demanding a bit more of himself in this particular moment? Word on the ground, Fiso, is that he's not the easiest coach to play for. Um, as you just mentioned, he, he, he demands a lot of his players, but he, he is prone to lose his temper from time to time. And uh, the typical South African footballer is a very strange creature. Um, it's a creature that takes a lot of understanding and nurturing. Very fickle, very, I don't know, soft on the edges. Um, it doesn't take much to push a South African football player over the edge. Um, as the top end consumer who sits in front of the TV every weekend to try and watch top class football and think, ah, my team's going to do well this weekend, we might not be privy to this information. So, uh, the word is that the players are not really warming up to his tactics, his way of doing things, his style of play. Um, and that might take some getting used to. And what he's riding on is. Let me keep this team afloat until June, July 2021 when the transfer ban is lifted. Now, my question to other friends and colleagues is that will he be able to last up until then? If you've played 19 matches, we saw, you've scored 18 goals, you've only won five games, six draws and eight losses, that is not a good record to start off with. Even if you're buying yourself time to get to the end of the season and get your own players, it is not good enough. We, I say we because as a chief supporter, it hurts, run the risk of being in the relegation battle come the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to count those goals. It's not, it's not much, eh? It's not much. That's, not a, scary, much. that's a scary number for 
a team like Kaiser Chiefs, a team known for attacking football, playing on the front foot, flair. None of those things are present right now. And I don't mean to be harsh on Kevin Hunt because I happen to be, to, to be a, bit, a massive fan of his as, as a coach because I, I like people that find ways to win, especially, like you were saying, sometimes with teams that are not expected to. I think it's a, it's a unique skill, but also then it's a unique skill to manage big players, big egos, big clubs. Definitely. Gavin Hunt comes with a, a very unique type of um, experience. Um, he, he in, his, in, in his own skin, is a big personality. Um, so, so when you're dealing with a character like that, there's a lot of dynamics. He will go there, he will challenge the status quo at Kaiser Chiefs. Um, there's a very sort of distinct hierarchical structure at Kaiser Chiefs. Things go from the chairman... Um, go down to Bobby Mudaung, who's not only just the director of football, but he controls a lot of what happens in the back end of it. So Gavin Hunt has come in there and changed a few things. Like what, you might ask. He doesn't like teams camping for too long. Instead of teams coming in on a Friday, if the game is on Saturday, teams are coming in in the morning and leaving straight out from the game. Traditionally, Chiefs playing in Durban will arrive on Friday, play on Saturday, stay, leave on Sunday morning. Right? Now he's saying there's no need for the players to stay longer than they have to. The dynamic has shifted. The things that are expected of the club or the, what the players used to expect will happen in the, are not happening anymore. Now, these are small minor details that you might think as a football lover and a football uh, consumer or a supporter, they might not be the reason why Chiefs is not doing well. But it's a combination of all of these small minute details that is trying to impose on the players that is not quite working at the moment. And Gavin Hunt is a very stubborn character. He's not the type of person who's going to change just because things aren't going well. He will get going and he'll keep pushing his agenda until the very last day. And remember, he holds one of the biggest records in South African football. He's one of the only managers or coaches that have never been fired from any PSL team. Wow. That's a, that's a, a pretty interesting stat. And I mean, you touch on, on those small details, you know, it, it probably is a big detail in terms of the psychological point of view of players, you know, who are used to arriving at a time where they can almost settle into an environment. It's not, it's not a, I mean, someone might, might say, oh, it's only one day, so it doesn't really uh, allow a player to settle. But uh, it's, a, it's a big shift when you speak of routines and how it's always been done. Um, and it's something that I, I guess is a dynamic that we can add to the mix. Definitely. Typical example, Chiefs against Amazulu a couple of weeks ago at Kings Park Stadium. Uh, the first win they got in the league uh, when Nokovic came back as a returnee from a long layoff and injury and contractual dispute with the club. Chiefs arrived, same day. Pre-match meal, went to the field, played, won one nil, took a shower at the stadium, got onto the plane, back to Johannesburg. So he's thinking, okay, I've won. Now I can continue using the strategy to try and change the way things are happening, but it's just not happening. The players are lethargic. You saw um, Kaiser Chiefs can hardly string together five, six passes. I don't even think Gavin Hunt knows his proper starting 11, to be honest with you. Players are being played out of position. Uh, players are being expected to do more than what they usually are able to do. And, and again, I, I know I'm mentioning what is happening now under Gavin Hunt, but he has inherited sort of like this incessant disease of Chiefs players that are just finding the jersey too heavy to handle. And we haven't been able to overcome that. And I think that's probably make the main reason why Chiefs were, was not able to close the league off uh, when it, it seemed like a full-blown conclusion last season. And I think all of those factors combined with his new way of doing things is just not happening. And I was telling a colleague the other day that it's not even an indictment on Gavin Hunt's ability. So hear me out. He is a brilliant coach, brilliant tactician. He's very good with players. He's very good with the youth. But sometimes combinations just do not communicate. And in this case, I think we have a serious case of combos not communicating, my brother. Yeah, that DJ Speedster would, would really love to, to, to hear that particular line there. The combos are communicating. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I mean, some fascinating points that, that, that you make there with regards to uh, mm -hmm. how things are, are shaping up at Chiefs. Um, and again, we go back to, I go back to another subject that we touched on a little bit earlier on, the transfer market. And you look at the history of Chiefs over the past 10 years. 
they haven't really been great in the transfer market. Um, you know, so again, you look, if you're looking at that and thinking, yeah, you know, they're going to go in, they're going to bring in players. Is that a guarantee? Question is, who do you bring in? Who's available? Right? Okay, look at the top end of the, of the team in the strike force. You talk about Bradley Hrobler, probably. What is he going to cost you? Stan Matthews is not going to let go of Bradley Hrobler for nothing. You're looking at something north of 10 million. Chiefs is not going to spend 10 million rand on one player. That's not going to happen, right? You look at the midfield. When the now defunct Wits University was dismantled and, and, and teams were taking players from the club like a flea market sale on a Saturday afternoon, Chiefs was nowhere to be found. Why? Mistakes done in previous transfer windows came back to haunt us again. All of those players are tied down to contracts now. No one is available, right? Look at the back. Who do we play? Best left back in the country is in the wilderness at, at, at Swallows, not even getting game time, right? You look at right back. Frost has just returned from a long layoff, struggling to get find his form. He's still playing with a heavily bandaged knee. We're playing Moleko, we're playing Gezano at right back. We haven't found the right combination. Now, what we've done, we are now playing um, Castro as an impact player. We are playing Cardoso as a number six defensive midfielder. We're playing five defenders at the same time. It's just not happening. And everything he seems to be trying seems to be crumbling down. And you, you need to understand that in order for a coach like Gavin Hunt to buy himself at least reasonable time to get to his promised land, you need to string together at least some sort of decent results. You don't have to play pretty. Play winning effective football. Try and find a way to make your team tick. Pick a team for five games in a row. Pick a consistent lineup. Stick with it. Play players in the right position. Don't play a frost lad right wing because he's good with crosses. Play him at left back or left wing because he's ambidextrous and he can kick with both feet. That's not how te a team like Kaiser Chiefs is going to regain four. Top goal scorer, no. Of course, in period, three goals. No, no, Chief. Things are not happening. They're not happening. Yeah, sure. And it's, it's, it's such an intriguing subject, you know, because yeah, you go back to, I guess, the, <laughs> the Chiefs teams. You know, you could call upon your Tabo Moki to come off the bench and make things happen. You can call on Emmanuel Scaramgobese to, to, to mm. get the crowd going. You know, we've seen the likes of Sean Bartlett donning the, the, the jersey of Kaiser Chiefs. Collins and Besuma at, at his very best was an unbelievable player. We've seen players with personality. I think more than anything, Jabu Mashangu was, I mean, it was Jabu Pule back then. Guys who demanded the ball. Guys who were not afraid to make things happen in a game. Um, it's almost like, like you touched on a little bit earlier on. The, is the jersey heavy? Um, you know, is the right personality being brought into the club? Or is it just a case of he's a good player at, at Cape Town City, at Barocca, or wherever they sign him from, let's bring him in. Is enough scouting being done to understand the personality of those players? Can they cope in pressure situations? Can they handle the, 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 the massive responsibility that is there in terms of representing Kaiser Chiefs? Funny you mentioned scouting. <laughs> Uh, Walter Steinbock, who's the director of scouting with the chief scout at Kaiser Chiefs, might, might have a few things to say about that. But second to Mamelodi Sundowns, Chiefs has probably the second biggest scouting network in the country. Um, and I'm talking about yeah, all the way from the team manager or Smev or um, uh, all the way to, to Steinbock himself, the chief scout. These guys, they've got years of experience combined amongst them. <laughs> and I think contrary to popular belief, Chiefs actually in previous seasons have gone to the market to get players. These players that are at Chiefs were not players that were signed for free. So we need to get that straight. These are players that were paid for to be there. Uh, now the question was, when they were being signed, they were being signed to fit a particular profile based on the coach's expectation and based on the coach's wish list. Remember, that post Stuart Baxter, Chiefs went on to a transitional period where U Solinas came on, to, came on board. We got to billiards during that time. U Castro was pretty raw at that time. So the expectation was that we were going to make a smooth transition into the next wave of history for Kaiser Chiefs. And that did not happen. So when Solinas did not click, things just seemed to not go into place. Scouting didn't seem to be doing the right job. 
the players that were expected to do certain things just didn't, were not able to do certain things. And in the meantime, Sundowns, Pirates, and all of these other so-called big teams were capitalizing in the vacuum that was being created by how we were buying players. Remember, it chiefs prior to the 21st century, if you were, was a team that will go into the market for so and buy the best players available. Whether they fit into a particular system or not, if you are the best player in the country, you have to come to the best team. And that best team has the best coach who will make you be the best player in the country when you are there. Currently, it's hard to find that synergy between the best players in the country, the type of glamour that comes with the history of the club, and the right coach who's able to blend all of that in. Who, Gavin Hunt, will not play the type of football that is synonymous with Kaiser Chiefs, even if he can get all his players. And that's a problem, my friend. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the subject, you know, because it's a fascinating one for me. Um, you know, Kaiser Chiefs is such a, a storied club, such a historic club have been the trend centers really in South African football for so long. They were a big part of taking our football to the next level in South Africa. And when they struggle like this, it doesn't bode well for, for the national team <laughs> football in general in this particular country. And, and I think that's the saddest part. Take allegiances aside. I think any person who puts on their football hat as a proud South African thinks we need a strong Kaiser Chiefs. As, as, as you do in most countries, you know, in Argentina, you need a strong Boca Juniors, a strong River Plate. In, in, in England, you need a strong Manchester United, a strong Liverpool, because those kind of, you know, we've seen, even, even you go back to, to 2010, Spain wins that World Cup because of a strong Real Madrid and a strong Barcelona. It's just a fact. You look at Spain now, they're hot and cold, and there's probably like two or three players that actually come from those clubs. And, and that's, and it's something you probably never thought of, you, you, you'd hear. But if you think about it, really, you know, you've got Sergio Ramos, you've got Sergio Busquets, you know, um, yeah, who else is in that, in, in that team? Um, from those two major clubs, there's not much. Mm. So you, mm. you always need your biggest, biggest clubs in your country to be doing well. And not as a bias point of view, it just seems to make things happen somehow. And I think clubs like your Kaiser Chiefs, as you mentioned, are sometimes victims of their own success, so to be honest with you. Because you build yourself such a brand, you build a pedigree for yourself. And the expectation that comes with being such a club is sometimes ignored when times are tough. Um, or not ne- ignored per se, but neglected in terms of understanding. It's, it's very important for us to understand um, what it takes to build a brand, what it takes to have historical mileage. And that's what Kaiser Chiefs has. That's what a Juventus has. That's what a Real Madrid has. That's what a Man United has. But every now and then, organizations go through a transitional period due to a change in circumstances. Either they have not been able to adapt to the changing environment or they become victims of material conditions of the time. Now, as semantic as that may sound, or as cryptic as that may sound, it actually might be the root cause for some of the problems that Kaiser Chiefs. And the inherent problem with South African football culture is that these are organizations that are governed as family-owned businesses. And it is very difficult for any other outside stakeholder to intervene to try and change the dynamic. Um, But... Kaiser Chiefs is a well-oiled organization. And probably, and hear me out, the fact that the business model at Kaiser Chiefs is so well orchestrated might actually be the reason why they don't go into the market aggressively and break the bank when it comes to bringing in recruitment. They feel that if they recruit smartly, they can do good business. And unfortunately, that's come to backfire and, and bite Kaiser Chiefs where it hurts the most. And as things stand, it's painful to even watch Kaiser Chiefs play. So they, the, the, the brand of football is just, it's uninspiring. You don't see where the next goal is going to come from. Anyone who walks into f Stadium can walk away with all three points or can walk away with the win, as we saw over the weekend with Richards Bay, which is a team that ordinarily Kaiser Chiefs would not be losing against. So it's, it's sad overall to see that that has led almost to um, a domino effect and that has affected 
even your likes of Bafana Bafana. Who who do we send to Bafana Bafana? So, um, who who does Molif and Tegu call up from Kaiser Chiefs? Who, based on what merits? No one, and that's a big problem. And uh, I wish I had a crystal ball to look into, my friend, and tell you that things are going to be okay. And I told a colleague earlier, Gavin Hunt is not the right coach for Kaiser Chiefs. Some of the players that are donning that jersey are not players that should be donning the jersey at Kaiser Chiefs. People need to just admit that. And the sooner we admit that, the better. But it might take us maybe another two or three seasons to go over this cycle and start rebuilding again. And it's not, we, we can't rebuild a brand like Chiefs we saw from the development structure. We have to build by bringing on pedigree to merge that pedigree with um, those youth structures. And then over time, maybe things can be better, but we need to start attracting different uh, personnel at the club if we have to do things differently. Yeah, really interesting take there with regards to, obviously, the, the, the status that Kaiser Chiefs. I wanted you to, to look into your crystal ball, but you've already told me that you can't. So I guess, the, I guess the, that, 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 that goes away. But, you know, as, as, as a football man, as someone who's worked in, in football administration, as someone who's worked as, as an agent, let's look at Kaiser Chiefs and look at it from a neutral perspective and say, okay, yeah, the team's not doing well. Are there psychological scars there? Maybe. Um, but on paper, there's still some decent players that are there that you could potentially mm. build with. Is mm. the future, hear me, hear me well, yeah. Is the future, maybe not bright, but is there a brighter day ahead soon? <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my Kaiser Chief supporter cap off. Bear with me here. Yes. Why? <clears throat> the plan is to overhaul the squad. Hear me out. There's a purported 13 to 15 new players that are going to be signed in the new window, which means there's going to be a revolving door at Natural Aim. A lot of popular players, a lot of players that have been part of the history are going to be leaving the club, right? And Gavin Hunt, my good friend, has been given carte blanche to do as he pleases. Not necessarily a blank check, but he's been given carte blanche. And that carte blanche, my friend, comes with a systematic approach that they've decided to do. They have cast their eyes to the transfer window in June, July, and said, right, who can we start talking to now as a potential signing for them? Right? So there are certain players that are on the last six months of their contracts in their club, right? There are certain players that are, have not renewed their contracts in certain clubs, right? And there are players that are playing to impress because the next big buyer in the PSL will be Kaiser Chiefs. And if you are not on that list by the time we get to about 10 games to go in the season, you probably won't make the switch. So there are players, my friend, that Mr. Gavin Hunt has earmarked to change the fortunes at Kaiser Chiefs. And bear with me one more time. Gavin Hunt has never been able to coach a team with star-studded players. What he does, he dismantles the hierarchy in a squad to create a team of players that are all playing under a cloud of uncertainty. And once he develops a cloud of uncertainty, meaning I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep my jersey for the next game, the players in his squad usually stand up, rise to fight for him to give him the results that he's earned over the past couple of clubs that he's coached. Majoro shines and gets hot and gets, gets let go. Kabadini Mohango starts banging in goals, gets let go. Um, Upule starts shining in the net bank cup for Vicks, gets let go. I can, I can name a whole plethora of players that have come and gone. Unchanga Ase wins the league in 2016, 2017 with Vitz. He's gone, surplus of requirements. Monare is hot for three, three and a half seasons. All of a sudden, he's not playing, right? He rotates his squads. He does not like to have a Billiard, a Castro, a Nukovic, a player's player or a player's or a fan's type of player. He does not do that. So his plan is to go to June, dismantle that squad, get rid of all these high highly paid players, bring in players that are going to play for him and play 
his kind of football. And you'll be surprised, my friend. There are players that are playing in clubs that are on their way to natural end. Nancy J, you've got some hot stories coming for us. I'm excited. I'm excited. I know you're going to keep your ear on the ground for us. Um, and uh, you, you, you've been an amazing addition to the show from a football perspective because you give us that, 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 that hot news from the ground. So, again, we appreciate mm. that. Um, I think we can probably speak all day with regards to kind of the Chiefs, what can be done differently. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we've got to respect the club. We are not Kaiser Chiefs. We are not, we don't have the, 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 their hats on. We don't know what, they, what they're building. So, yeah, I think mm. we've got to trust the process. And hopefully, hopefully soon, we will see Kaiser Chiefs back at their very best. And I think as a general football public, we want to see Kaiser Chiefs challenging for the title. And hopefully, that will happen sooner rather than later. Definitely, definitely, my friend. We all hope for the best. Now, I know you hope for the best because you're obviously a kind of Chiefs fan. You know, you're coming here with your, your biased energy. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We love you the best. But uh, yeah, I'm going to let you go now. Um, thank you yeah. for your time again. And hopefully we'll, we'll be back chatting again soon. Um, I know Stanton couldn't, 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 um, couldn't stay for the entire show. But um, yeah, hopefully the three of us will be back together discussing more DSTV Premiership. And then hopefully there's, there's plenty of interest, interesting stories to come. Definitely, man. I can't wait for the, the next invite. All right. No, thank you very much, Menzi. Thank you, sir. Well, that is Menzi Mobo, uh, resident football expert. Yeah, it's been another really good show. We've spoken at length with regards to uh, Kaiser Chiefs as well as the other matters in the DSCB Premiership. But we've got to say goodbye. And we thank you. We thank you, everyone who's supporting the show. And until next time, it's goodbye. Make sure that you keep subscribing. Make sure you keep liking and following the show on all platforms and go check out the website www.thefistmanshow.com. That'll take you to all our social media platforms. Until next time, goodbye.